Okay, recording has started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Maritime Lebanon Safety and Security of Shipping Open Webinar, organized by the International Center for Migration Policy Development in close cooperation with the World Maritime University and with funding from the European Union. The open webinar is expected to last for about two and a half hours. The webinar is being recorded for later uploading on social media platforms. My name is Arif Fakhri. I'm Associate Professor at the World Maritime University and I shall be the moderator of this event. This webinar is the second in a series called Maritime Lebanon and designed as a platform for transparent discussion by experts on the potentials and challenges facing the maritime facet of coordinated border security management in Lebanon. The discussions are expected to support the development of a national integrated maritime policy in Lebanon. The first Maritime Lebanon webinar held on the 27th of May, 2021, highlighted the prerequisites for sound maritime governance in the Lebanese national context. The webinar included a comprehensive overview of international maritime governance, best practices and legal frameworks, an in-depth analysis of Lebanon's national maritime regime, infrastructure and operation, and an empirical and evidence-based presentation on maritime governance and cooperation in the context of the Beirut port. The webinar highlighted the importance of maritime and marine management in Lebanon the need to further integrate international actors in this domain, the fundamental role of civil society and the private sector, as well as the absolute necessity of implementing existing laws and conventions adhered to. Lebanon traditionally thrived on the connectivity and resilience of its ports. Today, it is facing a composite challenge, which the World Bank describes as sinking into one of the most severe global crises episodes amidst deliberate inaction. On the 4th of August 2020, Beirut's port witnessed a devastating explosion from a large consignment of ammonium nitrate that had been offloaded in 2014 from the freighter Rosas and stored in one of its warehouses. The explosion led to at least 207 deaths, 7,500 injuries, and 15 billion US dollars in property damage and left an estimated 300,000 people homeless. The disaster was met by consternation around the world. Out of the International Maritime Organization's list of 59 standard conventions regulating international shipping, Lebanon is party to only 26 instruments. The IMO and other regional organizations, including the EU, have been assisting Lebanon both before and after the Beirut port blast to develop its maritime capabilities. In a joint letter published on the 15th of June, 2021, 53 Lebanese regional and international rights groups and individuals, as well as 62 survivors and families of victims and firefighters called on member states of the UN High Human Rights Council to dispatch a mission to investigate the 4th August 2020 Beirut port explosion. The plea points to grave irregular irregularities in the ongoing judicial investigations and proceedings in Lebanon and raises questions about the role of the port custodian agency's own investigation into the blast. This webinar will address, one, the view from Lebanon's maritime administration the Directorate General of Land and Maritime Transport at the Ministry of Public Works and Transport. Almost a year on from the devastating Beirut port explosion on the 4th of August 2020, what measures have been taken to upscale maritime safety and security in Lebanon seas and ports? What are the capabilities and challenges for Lebanon's primary authority responsible for implementing the rules regarding the safety and security of shipping and ports. Two, the importance of international maritime conventions and best practices as a guiding tool for the Lebanese civilian 
and security authorities in the maritime domain and the role of the International Maritime Organization. Three, Euromed Transport Maritime Project SafeMed 4 implemented by the European Maritime Safety Agency, EMSA, in Lebanon. Four, a practitioner's view on the implementation of ship safety standards in Lebanese ports and on board Lebanese vessels. This webinar aims to facilitate a common understanding among a wide range of relevant audiences on the roles of national, international, and regional maritime agencies and organizations in ensuring safety and security of international shipping, both at sea and on the port side. Before I give the floor to the panel of experts, I would like to invite Mr. Victor Mackay, ICMPD's project manager, to give some further background context to this webinar. Mr. Mackay, the floor is yours. Thank you, Araf. Thank you very much. Uh, let me also uh, greet the participant, uh, whose number is, uh, is uh, again growing uh, exponentially, which we like very much. Uh, and also to our uh, distinguished speakers from the Ministry of Public Works and Transport, Admiral Ship Management, uh, International Maritime Organization, and European Maritime Safety Agency. Uh, as I was introduced, my name is Victor Mackay. I'm the project manager of the uh, referred project, namely the strengthening capability for integrated border management in Lebanon. Please allow me to, to shortly introduce to the, the, the donor of, uh, of the project and also this conference, although it's a, it's a webinar, so we, we, it's not really uh, a, a donor support, uh, that, but also the implementing organization. Um, of the, this project. Uh, so the webinar is part of the strengthening capability for integrated border management in Lebanon project, which is funded by the European Union and builds on the sustained effort to support effective, efficient and coordinated border management in Lebanon since 2012. The project is part of the EU Lebanese cooperation aimed at promoting national security and regional stability. The EU IBM Lebanon project takes into close consideration and builds on the lessons learned from previous implementation phases by developing more targeted communication activities, such as this webinar and outputs, and it seeks to highlight the importance of the EU's continued support and commitment in contributing to enhance border management, security, and safety in Lebanon. The project is implemented by international uh, Center for Migration Policy Development, uh, as it was mentioned by RF as well, which has carried out several EU-funded projects in the field of border management and security in Lebanon since 2012. ICMPD is an international organization with 80 member states active in more than 19 countries. Uh, priority regions include Africa, Central and South Asia, Europe, and the Middle East. Uh, we have a three-pillar uh, approach to migration management mainly. Structural linking research, migration dialogues, and capacity building to contribute to a better migration policy development worldwide. The Vienna based organization has a mission in Brussels, <clears throat> regional office in Malta, and project offices in several countries, such as one in Lebanon. Uh, ICMP was founded in 1993, holds UN observer status, and cooperates with more than 700 partners, including EU institutions and UN agencies. Now, this maritime uh, webinar is a as a part of a complex activity set uh, of the above mentioned project, uh, aiming to develop comprehensive and integrated maritime policy for Lebanon with all concerned actors. The IBM Lebanon project principally uh, dealing with the security agencies, but the maritime complex is, uh, is taking a bit broader approach. And this webinar is also a part of this uh, uh, endeavor. Anyway, I hope you will find the subject interesting for you. And I hope it will generate discussion among uh, the presenters and the part, uh, participants, uh, most likely sometimes uh, vivid discussions, which we like very much. Uh, but I would like to ask uh, all of you to, to stay on the subject because it's very, very important uh, for all of us. And uh, as a closing word, I would like to express my appreciation to the World Maritime University especially RF, uh, you are really a great help uh, to, to me and also to the project. And I think we could have not done uh, without you and also without the partners. And uh, I wish you good luck to, to, to all of us. And these are my closing words. Uh, RF, back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Victor. 
I would now like to turn to the expert presentations. We have four high level speakers lined up and each has been allocated 15 minutes. Comments and questions from the audience are highly encouraged and welcome at any stage in the chat box of the Zoom application. We will select those that can be answered by panelists during the discussion period right after the expert presentations. I would now like to turn to the expert presentations. We have, as I said, four high level speakers. And to begin with, I turn to the first speaker. Captain Hassan Shaban is a technical advisor at the Director General of Land and Maritime Transport within the Lebanese Ministry of Public Works and Transport. His responsibilities include ship safety, security, certification and pollution prevention based on IMO, ILO, UNCLOS and EU instruments. Captain Shaban holds a master's degree in nautical st studies and fleet management from the World Maritime University here in Malmo, Sweden. Captain Shaban is coordinator of the Lebanese National Security Committee, a member of the Nautical Institute in London, project coordinator of Motorways of the Sea EC Lebanon, national coordinator of the SafeMed project EC Lebanon 2006-2017, alternative national coordinator of EMSA SafeMed 3, member of the Nautical Institute's delegation to IMO and a member of the National GMDSS Radio Operators Examination Committee. Captain Shaban's address is going to take us through the strategizing of maritime safety and security while reeling from the effects of the Beirut port blast. The view from Lebanon's Maritime Administration the Director General of Land and Maritime Transport. Captain Shaban, the floor is yours. We seem to have a, uh, we are unable to hear you, uh, Hassan. We can hear you, but we cannot hear you. I mean, we can see you, but we cannot hear you, sorry. Now you've muted yourself, yes. Well, Okay, may I suggest that uh, we communicate privately with Hassan on trying to resolve this? And I could ask, let me ask Joseph, uh, you're with us uh, from the IMO, um, just to be on the standby in, in, in case we, uh, we may have to swap. Not a problem. Yes. Thank you, thank you for that. Let's just wait a moment. Uh, it says here his connection is unstable. So maybe that's why we can't hear him. He may need to reboot as well. And, uh... I think we're able to hear something. <laughs> Okay, can I start now? Yes, yes, go ahead. Understand? Thank, thank you. We, we thank can hear you. I am sorry. Yeah, I start. Thank you very much, dear distinguished delegates. Good morning. On behalf of the ministry, I would like to. Uh, formally express our sincere appreciation and and, uh, uh, and uh, gratitude to European Union, France, and IMO, and our special thanks to EMSA, 
to WMU and MCD to form this special event webinar dedicated for Lebanon to identify priorities, matters to safety and security and shifts in force. Now I will start our slides. The slides you can consider it as as suggested recommendation. Suggested recommendation. First of all, Lebanon's government about navigation. We have two laws in Lebanon, very fundamental laws governing all activities and shipping, ports and ships and port services, everything. First one, Merchant Marine Code of 1947. The second, Lebanese Ports and Harbors Regulation System of 1966. Captain Kaban, may I just uh, intervene to ask you to perhaps uh, raise your voice? Yeah. So we can hear you better. All right. Yeah. You hear me now better now? Is it okay now? Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right. As I mentioned, two fundamental laws, Merchant Marine Code 1947 and the other law, Lebanese and Port Harbor Regulation 1966. Very important, important two laws above mentioned, it need to be changed, amended, and updated. Second, second for, for ISPS, security matters, we speak about security on ships and ports. Let's start by, by ports and harbors. We should activation, do activation, reactivation of our National Security Committee. This National Security Committee is established by Prime Minister decision dated to 2004. The National Security Committee, it, it is a designated authority. Uh, is it responsible for all ports, port harbors, and facilities along the Lebanese coast? And the Lebanese coast, these ports, it's, Port Security Committee is responsible for port, uh, port facility security assessment and port facility security planning plans, and to do as well on scene visit inspection to ports and port facilities. After getting their approval, the document compliance for ports or port facility issued, signed by the head of the head of the. Uh, National Security Committee. In Lebanon, we have 37 ports and port facilities. Among them, eight port and port facilities belonging to the government. In addition to two shipyards, dry dock located in Tripoli, which are outside, which are not implemented at all, the ISPS or, or the, the ballast water management or anti-fouling system, later on we can speak. And the other 29, around 29, 27, oil terminals and the gas terminals, they are all private. They are all private. Anyway, uh, yeah. We speak now about the security of the ships. The security of the ships are carried out by uh, by private contracting company to do the inspection and approval of ship security planning and the issuance of safety security certificate for the ship is the responsibility of our directorate and signed by our di director general the most important fact until now we do not have national legislation about the security. This is fact. This, I read this to, to come to this point. All right. Now we speak about the uh, ships as well. We have 20 ships. All, uh, this is the number of our fleet actually, they are all ISPS compliant. And as you know, we this year started the cyber, my time cyber management area, risk, risk system. It should be carried out by all ports and, and ships as well. Even the uh, stakeholder activities like uh, agents, it should be cyber maritime free. Anyway, uh, we jump now to the safety and accordance to for ships and ports. All ships, all our ships has implemented the safety management system is the core, the core of safety, the very important core is international safety management 
uh, of ships and po uh, pollution prevention is implemented all over Lebanese ships and ship management company. This inspection are carried out by a private company, private contracting company, and the, the certificate document of compliance for ship management company and safety management certificate for ships are issued by our director general and signed by the director general. Unfortunately, a very important fact to show to everybody is we do not have a national legislation about the ice and coal. This is very, very important. How to control all over uh, ships and foreign ships. And we as in Lebanon and, and our uh, inside in Lebanon internal Lebanese legislation not exists. Anyway, we can jump now for the safety measures inside the ports. Inside the ports, actually import of Beirut regulation of safety should be amended. And as well, the maritime cyber risk management system is applied, it started this year. Till now, no news about the port authority, about this, uh, this, uh, this, this obligation. And handling and carriage of dangerous goods and aero safety and health in ports should be adopted. I said should be adopted. It means that we do not have any updated regulation about this point. Very important. Unfortunately, we do we do not have safety and health committee in accordance to ILO recommendations and ILO code of uh, code of practice for safety and health in ports. Very important code. Even in port authority doesn't not in Beirut, unfortunately for all Lebanese ports, they, they didn't give full care for this code, important. Even we don't have a health and safety management system, it should do from port authority are requested to revise international port, port safety conventions and national laws to issue port safety circulars of, of, of compliance as appropriate in accordance to ILO. Never existed. Now, at the end, sorry, I don't have the counter. Um, at the end, I will speak generally, in generally out, outside a little bit the subject of the webinar. This uh, all mentioned down below comes from international convention ratified by Lebanon, as we said before about ISM code, ISP code, ISPS code, should be transposed into national law. It doesn't exist yet. Even for anti-fouling convention ratified by Lebanon, this is very important to be mentioned because uh, to be do something because we have already two dry docks in, uh, in uh, Port of Beirut, uh, uh, located in uh, near the Port of Tripoli, doesn't care for this, all the blistering and sand blasting of the ship's hull, all comes down, drop down to the sea. And as I mentioned as well, ballast water management convention is ratified by Lebanon is very important. As we know, we have to do, uh, up, up to this moment, we, we do not have a regulation concerning the ballast water management for 2000 expected to enter into force totally into 2024, where every ship should have a treatment system or otherwise an exemption. But now it should be for deballasting and, and take in, take out ballast and deballast. Is it, it should be forbidden. Unfortunately, some circular of safety in Lebanon issued by the, our the administration regarding fees and penalties, they mentioned they give the authority to do the deballast and ballast inside the ports and the roadsteads. I am very sorry to, to say that. What I mentioned this in this list. This list can be a guide, a recommended for the expert, the uh, WMU expert who, who will join Lebanon, who will do uh, in his mission, next mission, future mission, to take it on his, to take it into consideration. This is like basic information for him and for everybody and for you as well. For vessel traffic system, it should be upgraded. Up to now, we do not have radar on board. Secondly, as I mentioned before, we are 
ratifying all these conventions, like for port of refuge. Until now, we do not have any any instruction to do. We do not indicate the position or place to to uh, to receive and reception ships in distress. Even we do not have maritime service assistance, and that as well we ha we have already assistance, but kindly, but in a matter to uh, to to be notified uh, as an instruction and procedure to IMO never existed. We should have at least a list of emergencies, list of doctors, list of hospitals, uh, rush hours, uh, night time to the, the sick people to to cross the border. Uh, the gate without short pass, a permission to, to enter to hospital directly. And for our search and rescue as well, we have really, we do not have until now any plans, any plans concerning this. It suggests that we have three options. Honestly, we have cooperation agreement with neighboring countries like Cyprus and Syria and search and rescue, or to, if not possible, politically, we can do it as uh, agreement with the private salvage uh, uh, company, or otherwise we should do something uh, else. I don't know really, bilateral, everything is possible. Now we back as well, as well to IS station, very important in my point of view to do some cooperation agreement, regional, regional or, or sub-regional. You can ask me why, why? Because we are in need for sub-regional agreement and NIS because the LRIT station is, doesn't exist in Lebanon. So how to control our ships or see the events, accidents, anything outside the 100, 200 miles. Only exception if we have a regional agreement. The, I am very sorry to say it, to say LRIT station not established yet. Our ships are in the, uh, really in a bad situation. Uh, every time being uh, received the warning from foreign ports, once we do not have LRIT station at the land, it can be disaster for ships. It can be all ships uh, looking to, to, to the register and go outside. Now for LRIT situation, we can have choice to join a uh, regional, as, as I said before, a regional agreement or, or umbrella like Bahrain, uh, LRIT uh, regional center, or to do to, do, to establish our national center, or to have like uh, agreement with uh, satellite uh, companies like Fulcrum or Porstar, et cetera. And as well, the following is for far is it mandatory this year for maritime single windows and port computer system all the information to be exchanged in electronic version and as well we, do, we, we should not forget the air pollution reduction, reduction of uh, gray uh, uh, gh and the med and metransox uh, emission control area expected to, uh, to enter into force in 2024 now Lebanon is considered in our fleet as a livestock fleet. We are very famous and all worldwide. We have in our uh, every year here in Port of Beirut conversions from rural into livestock, uh, at least two ships. It's unfortunate to say we do not have regulation for care and handling of livestock and safe carriage of livestock. Despite the fact some many ships occurred in accident like Danny F2 and our outside territorial waters. I'm sorry to be uh, exaggerated a little bit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Captain uh, Shaban. I was actually going to uh, sort of uh, 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 remind you of the time, but you have been perfectly uh, timed uh, in your presentation. Thank you so much for a very uh, enlightening and candid assessment of the situation of safety and security across uh, maritime ports in Lebanon and uh, uh, in relation to the uh, Lebanese uh, registry of vessels. And I think that that uh, presentation will uh, be very useful 
for uh, laying the foundations for the discussion to follow. Uh, after the uh, expert uh, panel's uh, presentation, perhaps we can uh, now turn to uh, the next uh, valued uh, speaker of our webinar. Let me introduce to you uh, Mr. Joseph Westwood Booth from the IMO. Uh, Mr. Joseph uh, Westwood Booth is Senior Depu Deputy Director in the Subdivision for Marine Technology and Cargoes. Uh, within the Maritime Safety Division at the International Maritime Organization in London. Mr. Westwood Booth holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Marine Engineering and served as an engineering officer in the United, Nation, United States Navy. In 1990, 1990, he joined the US Coast Guard's Office of Design and Engineer Standards where he served as the chairman of the US State Department's SOLAS Working Group on Fire Safety and as the head of the US delegation to the Subcommittee on Fire Protection until his appointment in 1998 to the International Maritime Organization. At IMO, he is responsible for three technical IMO subcommittees tasked with the development of international safety standards related to marine engineering life-saving, fire safety, naval architecture, fishing vessel safety, and the safe carriage of cargoes. I should add that Mr. Westwood Booth is filling in for Ms. Heike Degim, director of the IMO's Maritime Safety Division, who had to excuse herself from this webinar due to a last minute appointment. Mr. Westwood Booth's presentation will focus on international maritime conventions and best practices as a guiding tool for the Lebanese maritime and port civilian and security authorities. It is a pleasure to give you the floor, Mr. Westwood Booth. Well, thank you, RF, and I first send you greetings from the Secretary General and Heike, who unfortunately couldn't make it, but Heike and I worked together for decades, so I'm sure we would have said something very similar anyway. So let me share my screen with you. Uh, let me get this right here. So, okay, so here's the PowerPoint. Okay. Let's see, is it is it showing up as a full screen to you? Okay, there we go. So you can see that? Absolutely. Okay, great. Okay, well, like, like uh, Arif said, uh, I'm a Senior Deputy Director in the Maritime Safety Division and it is indeed a pleasure to be here. Um, first things first, I know I have a lot to cover about IMO and its structure, and that will be interesting, but how can we start anything off without talking about COVID-19 first? And I just want to say that uh, IMO has always said that seafarers are simply on the front line for this, and it's been a real difficult task for seafarers to do things like crew change and get priority vaccinations. But IMO has worked hard since the pandemic began. The Secretary General has led the effort. And I'm just showing a few things here we've put out to assist. First, we have a uh, circular 1636, uh, includes industry recommendations and protocols for ensuring safe crew change and travel during the coronavirus. And we have a number of other circulars that follow that. They're like additions to that circular. So please go on our website, you can download them. We also, the Secretary General established the Seafair Crisis Action Team, which is uh, started basically when the pandemic began. Uh, and they've been working diligently through the entire uh, uh, crisis. And then there is now a UN General Assembly resolution that talks about um, identifying um, seafarers as critical workers. Uh, and hopefully all member states, the UN will implement those recommendations. So I couldn't encourage that enough. Um, and then there's information resources also on our IMO website. So, somebody has their speaker on uh, to mute. Mr. Uh, Hassan, can you mute? There you go. Good. Thank you. Okay, this just shows how, what is IMO? IMO is, uh, for those who don't know, as a specialized agency of the United Nations. We have 174 member states, three associate member states, 80 NGOs, and 63 IGOs. As you can see, except for a few landlocked countries, we pretty much cover the globe. Um, what do we do? We set standards for ship safety, ship security, and facilitation. We also protect the environment from shipping activities, including air pollution. Uh, we establish global provisions for search and rescue, which uh, Captain Hassan had just spoke about. Uh, we ensure uh, all seafarers are competent and properly trained. 
uh, through our STCW standards, and we ensure compensation is regulated when accidents happen. Most of the big treaties are right here in front of you, SOLAS, Low the Lines, Marpole, uh, Captain Saw was talking about coal regs, and then STCW and FAL. Very good take up, you know, we're talking 98, 99% which is fantastic. And uh, it could still go up a little more. There's a few countries that could still jump on board some of those. Um, so design will work. Do their regulations work? Is the international community getting uh, value for the efforts they put into IMO? I think this graph shows if it went all the way back to the beginning of IMO, you'd see the graph on the left be even higher. So over the decades, casualties have continued to fall. Uh, and yet the maritime sector has continued to grow. So this is a, an excellent example that regulation works and when properly implemented, you get the desired results. Hopefully one day, maybe we'll get that down closer to zero. Um, and of course you always have anomalies where like a Costa Concordia happens and just can't be avoided. But overall, the, the trend is outstanding and it's been outstanding for decades. So that's, that's a good thing to see. Ship casualties are indeed declining. This is our structure. We're run by an assembly who delegates a lot of its tasks to the council. That's uh, a 40 member council that may be expanded uh, in later years. Um, but there are five basic committees, uh, which I'm sure Lebanon uh, attends a number of these. Uh, the facilitation committee, we have the technical cooperation committee. I'll talk about a few of these legal committee, the maritime safety committee and the marine environment protection committee. Now the marine environment protection committee and maritime safety committee have uh, subcommittees that support their work. Um, some technical matters just can't be handled at the committee level. That's that picture at top is very, very crowded. Um, and I highlighted two in red that I think would be interested to the participants here. One is a lot of this is about your strategic plans for implementation of IMO instruments. That subcommittee is meeting this week, actually. Um, so this is a good one to get involved with, especially now that you don't even have to send people there. You just join remotely on 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 KUDO, that's our platform, our Zoom platform, so to speak. Uh, and of course, because of the Beirut explosion, carriage of cargoes and containers, there are relevant regulations there for port, um, port safety. And, and I would just add, I have an expert in the audience who could speak to that if there are questions. It's multiple. Okay, so how do we develop regulations? It's very straightforward. There may be a casualty. Uh, we can do review of the regulations, decide they need to be updated uh, because of new circumstances. And then, of course, when new technologies come out, the conventions need to stay up to date or they'll become irrelevant over time. So that's why they have to stay up to date. Uh, once a state uh, decides that action needs to be taken, they'll submit a proposal to one of the committees usually. Um, they'll, the committees will discuss and agree to take on the work or not. Sometimes they don't, sometimes they do. Uh, if they decide to, then draft text has to be prepared. In a lot of cases, if they if a committee has a subsidiary body like a subcommittee, they will send it to them because it may be very technical, and they'll develop it. And eventually, it'll get back to the committee will decide to adopt or approve it. Could be a recommendation. It could be a mandatory instrument. It could be a whole new treaty. Um, so, but the big thing here, I think, they're trying to show on the bottom slide is that you need to have a compelling need, and that's what that first blue arrow was all about. You have to demonstrate that we really need to take on this work and that it's relevant and it will deliver the desired benefits. Um, implementation, I know this is a big subject for, for this event, and implementation is the remit responsibility of the states. So we call that flag states uh, need to implement our regulations if they're party to these treaties on their own flagships. Uh, they also have uh, checks and balances through port state controls where you can see the ships entering your ports, in fact, comply with the treaties that we're all party to. Um, and then, of course, um, we have a mandatory IMO member state audit scheme, which takes place every seven years for member states. And I will address that a little bit more in detail here for Lebanon. Um, we also have a very strong technical cooperation program. Uh, they do a needs assessment, part through IMSAS, but our own needs assessment, uh, not just through the audit. Uh, we have donors always looking for more. Um, so uh, if any states are out there want to donate, we appreciate it. Um, and then we have uh, uh, World Maritime University, with uh, RF is from, and then IBLE, which is the Law Institute, and they're all fully supported from IMO headquarters, and uh, we also promote donations to these organizations. 
Okay, well, here's the IMSAS audit for Lebanon. Um, I'll just give you a few details. There's more to it, but some of it's confidential, so we can't release that. But uh, the audit that took place, the last audit for Lebanon was July 2018. There were two departments involved, the Ministry of Public Works and Transport and the Director General of Land and Maritime Transport. Maybe one falls under the other, I don't know. Um, and then there were six other departments and ministries that were involved with this audit. Um, we had three um, audit team uh, members. Of IMO secretary is usually part of the team. Uh, and then one came from Jordan and one came from Cyprus. Uh, the scope of the audit covers the treaties you see listed below, a soulless Marpol, SDCW, et cetera. And there were 26 findings of one observation. And the way these findings work out that they set calendar schedules uh, for when these findings have to be addressed by. And I think one date is coming up, it's August 1st this year. Uh, some of the uh, findings have to be resolved. Um, Lebanon has been active uh, in IMO um, events, and here's just a recent one. It's the uh, Ministerial Conference on Fishing Vessel Safety and Illegal Fishing. This was October 2019 in Torremolino, Spain. 126 states participated, including Lebanon. 40 international organizations and six UN agencies were there. The UN Secretary General's representative gave the keynote speech. And 51 states signed the Toro Molino Declaration, expressing their determination to ratify the 2012 Cape Town Agreement by October 2022, next year. And it turns out that one of those signatory states is Lebanon. So thank you very much, the government officials who are here for committing to ratify the Cape Town Agreement. And I just want you to know any way that IMO could support you through technical cooperation, uh, we're here to do it. We do have bilateral meetings with states. We've been conducting a number of them. We just finished one up with the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, if Lebanon uh, is having any difficulties or would like some technical advice or legal advice, please feel free to contact me and we'll arrange a bilateral meeting with your government officials uh, to help support your commitment uh, for October 2022. Um, well, we can't forget that, you know, we have a World Maritime Day theme, and despite the pandemic, uh, we're moving forward on that, and you can see for 2021, it's seafarers at the core of shipping's future, and that couldn't be more appropriate, especially in light of the problems seafarers have faced uh, during the pandemic. It's been tragic, but uh, together, uh, we're all addressing that, and that's the way to do it. We have to do it as a community, so... Um, and here you, you can see we have a web page on this. You can find lots of information on there. You just hit the, uh, you know, find out more and then it like opens up with lots of information. And of course, we're all over social media. And uh, I just want to say that uh, not just conclude with uh, it's a pleasure to be here, but just just know that we're here to support Lebanon in its maritime strategy. And uh, as is WMU and Emily, um, you just let us know where we need to uh, assist and, and we'll be there for you. And it's indeed a pleasure to be here. So thank you very much. Where turn this off? Here we go. Not sure. Stop there. There we go. Ah, here we go. Thank you very much. Eric. Thank you very much, Joseph, uh, for a uh, uh, crystal clear presentation on IMO's contribution to the subject. And of course, uh, uh, we have noted your. Um, uh, readiness for further assistance to uh, the country as well as other countries. Um, so I thank you again, and I would like to turn uh, now to the uh, following speaker, uh, whom I have the pleasure of introducing briefly. Uh, Mr. Fabrizio Pirelli, Project Officer for Technical Assistance to the European Neighborhood Policy countries at the European Maritime Safety Agency, EMSA, in Lisbon, Portugal. Mr. Pirelli began working at EMSA in 2017 as a seconded national expert in the capacity building unit. He is dealing with two EU projects, SafeMed4 and Black and Caspian Sea, which provide technical support to the national maritime administrations of European Neighborhood Policy, ENP, southern and eastern countries. This support includes training, courses and assistance in developing policies and procedures for the implementation of IMO and ILO instruments, support on IMSAS audits, which uh, Joseph referred to, and access to various tools and applications developed by EMSA. 
Mr. Pirelli has a legal background and shortly after becoming a lawyer, he joined the Italian Coast Guard in 2006. There he served in different ports and was increasingly involved in port state control and flag state implementation matters leading to his transfer to the Port State Control National Coordination Office in the Italian Coast Guard headquarters in 2012. He participated in many Paris MOU committees and attended various training courses in Italy and abroad on maritime safety and security aspects. Mr. Pirelli will provide a presentation on the Euromed Transport Maritime Project called SafeMed 4, implemented by EMSA in Lebanon. Mr. Pirelli, may I ask you to take the floor? Thank you. Thank you, RF. Good morning, everyone. I hope that you can see my screen. Yes, okay, it is. Let's... Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's start with this presentation about uh, the SafeMed4 project, uh, the Euromed Transport Maritime project, uh, uh, which is implemented by EMSA. In, during this presentation, we will not talk uh, about uh, the project. Uh, uh, the, we will not talk about only about the project, but uh, we will see also which are the activities uh, have been planned and conducted for Lebanon, because Lebanon is one of the beneficiaries uh, of the SafeMed4 project. And we will focus our attention on the gap analysis uh, that have been conducted uh, in uh, Lebanon uh, and uh, was concluded uh, uh, last month. So first of all, uh, a general overview about the project. The project uh, is uh, started uh, on uh, 16 March 2017 uh, and uh, will finish at the end of this year. The budget is 4 million uh, and uh, is an EU funded project uh, because uh, I mean it's funded by the Director General of the Neighboring Policy in, uh, of the European Commission. Which are the aims uh, of this project? First of all, enhancing capacity of the relevant government bodies and institutions to give full implementation of the International Maritime Convention and aligning the standards of maritime safety to EU standards and enhancing cooperation at the regional level and with the EU member states, which are the beneficiaries. Beneficiaries uh, are the maritime uh, administration uh, from uh, the uh, south of the Mediterranean. So you can see here the list. Uh, we have Algeria, Egypt, Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, Libya, Morocco, Palestine, uh, and uh, Tunisia. The project uh, uh, support this maritime administration uh, in uh, nine different components. Here you can see these components uh, are the flag state, uh, the post state control, the vessel traffic monitoring and information system, the protection of marine environment, the human element, the ship and port facility security, the Mediterranean Coast Guard Function Forum, uh, which is a forum that uh, is uh, um, building up uh, which uh, a, a general uh, uh, relation amongst uh, the beneficiaries uh, in order to develop uh, uh, knowledge uh, about the Coast Guard uh, functions. In, uh, within the context of the project, EMSA provides also bilateral activities according uh, to the, the beneficiaries needs uh, and uh, we take care of uh, the communication part of the project. On the right side of the uh, of this slide you can see the URL uh, web page uh, dedicated uh, to the project where you can find uh, all the activities 
uh, which uh, are conducted. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, one of the most important goal of the project is to enhance the cooperation between the beneficiaries and to enhance their capacity to implement and to enforce the international maritime instruments. These are some of the project's highlights that I would like to mention. First of all, the project uh, uh, contains uh, three different kinds of activities. Uh, we can uh, um, divide uh, the project activities in technical support, uh, in training session, and in tools and services. And uh, in the area of the technical support, uh, we conducted uh, visits uh, to the beneficiaries. Uh, uh, we uh, supported them developing uh, studies uh, on uh, the adequacy of port reception facilities uh, in uh, their port uh, or studies uh, in order uh, to develop uh, LNG uh, um, capabilities and uh, LNG facilities uh, in their port. Uh, we provided gap analysis in order uh, to verify which is the level of transposition, implementation and enforcement of the international convention in the beneficiaries. And we will talk about this later on. We also donate equipment, especially IS station on equipment in order to support the response capacity in about the pollution. And uh, we also develop uh, and draft procedures uh, or professional development scheme for uh, the post control officer and flag state inspectors uh, in uh, the beneficiaries. We provide also training sessions on each component, uh, each of the components that uh, I detailed uh, before. And we also provide tools and services developed by names in order to support the beneficiaries. Amongst them, uh, we have the rule check, uh, which is a repository of the international uh, convention uh, and also um, a repository of the procedure of the specific memorandum of understanding uh, to which uh, the country is part of. Uh, and it's quite important uh, in order uh, to help the post control officer that can easily find which is uh, the uh, international instrument amendments applicable on the specific ship uh, which they are respecting. We provide also e-learning courses uh, through our e-learning platform. We provide the CleanCNet services. CleanCNet is a services based on satellite images, which can support the maritime administration in order to detect ships, uh, uh, ships pollutants. We uh, support the sharing of TIS information between amongst the beneficiaries of the project between the beneficiaries and selected EU member states. And now let's talk a bit about the specific activities conducted for Lebanon. We provided bilateral activities like preparatory audit, a monk audit, in order to prepare the maritime administration of Lebanon in view of the IMSAS audit. We also take care about the follow-up of the IMSAS audit. We provided the port reception facility studies in the ports of Saida, Beirut, and Tripoli. We planned a tutoring project on post control that which was postponed due to the street protest in 2019. And we provided also a gap analysis on the, uh, uh, which is the level of uh, transposition, implementation, enforcement of the international instruments in Lebanon. We, uh, amongst the activities, we provided also regional activities. So, so you can see the list of training 
to which uh, Lebanon uh, uh, designated the two participants, uh, so training on all pollution response exercise, uh, training on IMSAS auditors, uh, two training sessions for flag state inspectors, uh, training on triple I code, uh, on core skill for accident investigators, three training uh, on uh, the post control procedures uh, of uh, MEDEMOU, two trainings uh, on the new database uh, which uh, is used uh, in the uh, Mediterranean MedMoU is called the Tetis Med uh, and is practically a clone of the database uh, which is in place uh, in the Paris MOU. We provided training on ballast water convention, two training sessions of the implementation of maritime level convention, training of DCCW, etc. And also we provided the, the tools uh, which I mentioned before, rule check, MAX, uh, which is the e-learning platform for uh, a course related to safety and security, that is made, and uh, the clean CNET images. And during the last steering committee meeting, uh, Lebanon requested some specific bilateral activities. Uh, and uh, the only activities uh, which have not been conducted uh, yet are the procedures, the drafting procedures for uh, monitoring of recognized organization and a specific training for flag state inspectors uh, related to the inspection on all supply vessel and modu platform. Uh, another activity that is still ongoing uh, is uh, the support in the implementation of the IMSAS corrective action plan, uh, which uh, has been developed by Lebanon uh, after uh, the IMSAS audit. And now very briefly, uh, mm, some uh, uh, some elements about the gap analysis uh, which was conducted in Lebanon last month and uh, this is uh, uh, as I told you this uh, the gap analysis generally cover the uh, which is at the level of uh, transposition and the implementation enforcement of the international maritime legislation and uh, also, the gap analysis helps to identify which are the priorities in this country and uh, provide also the, uh, an identification of the gaps and the bottlenecks in the legislative and the administrative process. The gap analysis is the first step for identify which has the specific support that which is needed in order to transpose the international convention which have not been transposed yet and in the gap analysis we propose also a mechanism to improve the legislative and administrative processes and a roadmap for the transposition and now, which were the results of the gap analysis? Practically, it came out that uh, there is no strategic plan for maritime sector in place. And this is, uh, in our opinion, uh, one of the most important things, because without a strategic plan, uh, it's uh, it's impossible to define which are the priorities and it's impossible uh, to identify which are the resources needed indeed without a strategic plan uh, it came out also that there is a lack of transposition and implementation of the international convention and a lack of resources and this brings uh, to my last slide, which is related to how we can address the gaps. And there are two levels. We can address uh, the gap at political level and uh, try to get, uh, which is uh, the adequate and appropriate commitment from the political level. And also try to uh, define, to support support the political level in order to define which is the strategic plan 
uh, which contains the priorities. And another uh, line, another action uh, is related to the administrative level. And in this case, uh, uh, what uh, should be done is to strengthen the capabilities of the administration, strengthen the coordination to streamline the resources because we, when uh, there are not enough resources, uh, the first step uh, is try to uh, use those resources uh, in the best possible way. And in order to do that, uh, it's important to, to introduce a systematic processes. In, it's important uh, to adopt a quality management system. It's important to predefine which are the processes needed for the maritime administration. Thank you, thank you for your attention. You can find on this slide, which are uh, the social media on uh, where uh, is, uh, you can follow the EMSA activities uh, and uh, you can uh, come back uh, to me for uh, any kind uh, of question related to this presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fabrizio, for your lucid presentation, uh, which points to a very active role uh, of the European uh, agencies, uh, especially EMSA, in uh, uh, tackling uh, the maritime capabilities of uh, Lebanon and the regional partners. Uh, and I think it's uh, very uh, useful that you shared with us also the findings of the uh, very recent uh, gap analysis that was performed in the Lebanese uh, maritime context. And I think that there are a lot of lessons to be drawn, uh, not just for the uh, ICMPD project, but uh, also as uh, a way to uh, uh, stimulate the discussions as part of this open process, which uh, uh, these webinars on maritime Lebanon, Lebanon uh, uh, are aimed to facilitate. So thank you for that, uh, very much appreciated. Uh, we uh, uh, can now turn to the final uh, uh, speaker of the webinar, and not the least. Uh, I have pleasure to introduce to you Captain uh, Jamil Sayer, uh, CEO and Principal Consultant and Surveyor at Admiral Ship Management, a Lloyd's agency firm. Captain uh, Sayer has over 40 years of experience in the maritime, oil and gas, and logistics industries. He is an accomplished master mariner and has commanded or operated bulk carriers, tankers, container vessels, oil rigs, and crude oil terminals. He has held topmost managerial positions in oil and gas companies across the Arabian Gulf. Additional qualifications and skills include maritime paralegal, marine insurance, loss adjusting, surveying, and consultancy. Captain Sayer will provide a practitioner's presentation on the implementation of ship safety standards. And I think uh, I sh we should add the ship safety and security standards in Lebanese ports and on board Lebanese vessels. Captain Sayer, may I ask you to take the floor? Thank you very much, uh, Arif. Thank you, everybody. Good morning from Beirut. Well, uh, to start uh, the presentation, you can say that uh, any port is a risky place because of the cargoes passing through and the intrinsic features of the wharves and the ships that dock there. In Beirut port case, this potential risk is increased by the fact that the port is an integral part of the city with the residential and commercial areas in close vicinity. A 3,200 meters breakwater protects the port from winds and currents from all directions, except from northwest to northeast, despite the construction of an auxiliary breakwater of 550 meters, which did not prove to provide the required protection at all times. The port is operated, as we all know, and managed by Gestion Exploitation du Port de Beirut, while the governmental control is provided by customs and various military authorities. 
it has a total area of 1,200,000 square meter and has four basins and 16 keys. A dedicated container yard with 1,100 meter length to accommodate ships with water depths of up to 16, 16.5 meter. It's operated by a private company. The container yard has a, a modest yard used for local in and out cargo, as well as transshipment. A berth for bulk carriers of 220 meter with 13 meter water depth in addition to other berths for general cargo. How the cargo is being handled? The port is equipped with modest cargo handling equipment, most of which belongs to private operators. The technical conditions of this equipment are mostly old and deficient a way or another, topped up by questionable qualifications of operators and uncontrolled maintenance records. Also the cargo weight determination equipment, which belongs to the Ministry of Economy, I believe, does not undergo periodical calibration, which often cause cargo weight disputes mainly for bulk carriers. The containers terminal was, was equipped with relatively acceptable handling equipment owned by the port. However, after the blast of August 2020, the condition of the equipment had degraded drastically. And at present, four or probably in this moment, only three ship to shore gantry cranes are operational. At present, the managing company is operating the port with restricted income, a fact that triples it and does not allow it to do any maintenance work to its equipment, which would degrade the port's already degraded capabilities. Many keys are occupied since long time by vessels under arrest or vessels undergoing maintenance or conversion. As uh, my colleague, uh, Captain Hassan said, uh, conversion into, uh, from Roro ships into cattle carriers. Thus, the, the presence of these vessels in the port, in the, in the tiny port, I may say, are diminishing port's cargo operational capabilities. Different types of cargo require different warehouses for various reasons, but mainly for safety and security. Basin number four in the farthest, is the farthest basin from residential area with three keys of relatively adequate water depths. This area could be the least risky place to construct warehouses to store dangerous goods for short durations. Thus we we circumvent accidents similar to what happened in August 2020. As to cargo safety and security, warehouse management, authority of parties, storage and control of cargo in, in, in warehouses. We know that any entity that manage uh, warehouses should demonstrate efficiency accountability, transparency, respons responsiveness, stability and equity, and should act in accordance with its quality management system ISO 9001 certificate. Beirut port website still shows that it is ISO 9001 certified. The, the, the managing company should observe the basics of management, such as plan, do, check, act, cycle. It's very easy. The root port had 22 warehouses used for storage of various types of cargo, including warehouse number 12 that was used for storage of dangerous goods, where a quantity of ammonium nitrate was stored for seven years, in addition to other flammable oxidizing, corrosive, and explosive cargoes. The known practices 
which have led or contributed to the disaster of August 2020, proved that lots of practices were not in accordance with ISO 9001, let me say, nor any other standard. Because as we all know, and we are auditors, ISO 9001 auditors as well, plus ISM lead auditors, we have three of us here in this office. We know that anything you do should be written and anything written should be done. So we wonder if any uh, quality management system was uh, in application before, years before the disaster of 2020 August. Now the container yard where dry and reefer containers are stored lacks adequate management, adequate management. At present time, the frequent interruption of electric power is causing huge losses to refrigerated cargo for which the port and respectively the state as cargo custodian remains liable. And the taxpayers are compensating cargo owners and, and consignees for the damaged cargoes. The car's open storage yard is not adequately equipped nor guarded. And this is an opinion, our opinion. During the blast of August 2020, 250 brand new cars were damaged to various extents up to the extent of constructive total loss. And many hundred used cars were destroyed. A bitter lesson that we learned from the catastrophe of 4th of August 2020 dictates establishing a code of good practice to address, among other good practices, the security and safety of cargo. Managing the facilities with qualified and trained personnel. Most speakers have touched on, on, on these subjects a way or another. But from a practitioner point of view, I'm, uh, I'm summarizing uh, uh, the, 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 most, the most conspicuous uh, issues that uh, may prevent uh, or may, uh, may assist in managing the port in a uh, normal way. Then equipping the facilities with adequate resources in sufficient numbers to cater for normal operations as well as for emergencies. Prevention of pollution and preservation of, envir of the environment. The above, or what we said, implies establishing proven processes for hazard identification, job specific risks, uh, risk assessment, I mean, in addition to emergency response plan, which I trust we don't have for Beirut or any other port. Look at our Code de Commerce Maritime, which is the maritime law in Lebanon, 1947. Then compliance with different international conventions and codes like the IMDG, the ISPS, the ISM. I'm glad that the audit of the IMO had shown, I don't know, 25 or 35 uh, deficiencies. It was uh, said now very politely as, uh, as remarks or observations, but these are deficiencies in general. So we know what the IMDG code stipulates. Uh, while the code does not apply directly to ports, but port management can benefit greatly from applying the relevant sections of the IMDG code to its local operations. And Lebanon does not lack specialists to compile a, a, a code of good practice, I mean, for IMDG cargo at least. This can be done if there is a will, there is a way. Persons handling dangerous goods must be made aware of the hazards these dangerous goods pose. The term hazard means a source or a situation with a potential harm with regard to people, environment, asset, and reputation. We've all heard what, what the victims, companions, 
uh, or the companions of the victims of August uh, 2020, what they said. The fire, fire, uh, fire brigade, they, they did not know, they were not made aware of what was uh, inside the warehouse number 12. <coughs> Sorry. The, the principle of segregation, stowage, and the storage should be respected, taking into consideration the hazard, the class, and compatibility of goods stored together. As to the international safety for ports and ships, the ISPS code, the code contains operational requirements which include to gather and assess information on threats to maritime security and to exchange such information, require maintenance of communication, of communication protocols for ships and for facilities. The code also calls to prevent unauthorized access to ships and port facilities and to their restricted areas. Well, this point is, uh, is adequately, somehow adequately covered. To prevent the introduction of unauthorized weapons and incendiary devices or explosives to ships or port facilities. To provide means for raising the alarm in relation, of security, uh, in relation to security threats or security incidents. Ship and port facility security plans should be there and should be compiled or established based upon security assessment. And when we say security, this does not mean the general security nor international security forces nor the army, but it is a common effort made primarily by the management of the port assisted by, assisted by all the military or paramilitary uh, uh, bodies and customs as well. We don't forget the training, drills, exercises to ensure familiarity with security plans and procedures once established. Since the ISPS code is based on risk assessment, the first step to carry out is risk and security assessment. Risk assessment cannot be made probably by, by anti-terrorism uh, anti-terrorism um, uh, specialists, but should be made by uh, port uh, industrial officers, security officers, but together with military or paramilitary specialists. The security assessment is a process that identifies weaknesses in infrastructures and physical structures and databases and information systems, communication systems, personnel protection systems, processes, and other areas that may lead to a security breach, which can pose a risk to persons or properties. It also suggests options to eliminate or mitigate the risks and their consequences. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, uh, just uh, to uh, alert you that uh, your time is up and if you can maybe Proceed to wrap up soon. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So let me skip uh, on the uh, codes, and uh, uh, we 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 skip to the uh, ships safety and security in in Lebanese uh, ports. <clears throat> thank you, Arif. Uh, yeah, one, one second, please. Really sure. Okay, so uh, when it comes to uh, ports and ships, well, the Marine Administration spares no effort with the personnel available to it, and there are not so many, in upkeeping the standard of Lebanese ships in line with international requirements. A good number of ship owners and managers disregard the international and local requirements which results in their vessels becoming vulnerable to various risks and expose themselves to considerable losses. Based on our experience while inspecting Lebanese registered ships on various occasions, such as by appointment of HAL and machinery or P&I clubs, or when investigating accidents or claims, 
we note quite often major deficiencies that affect the seaworthiness of the vessel, cargo worthiness, safety of navigation, safety of crew, risks to the marine environment, risks to ports and other vessels, to name a few. The major issues with the Lebanese ships can be summarized as follows. The age of the 30, 35 Lebanese ships that we still have, the age range between 23 and 60 year old, imagine, mostly livestock carriers. Only 10 seagoing ships are classed with IAX classification societies. The administration unfortunately recognizes non IAX classification societies whose control is quite slack. The manning of vessels is done with marginally qualified crew. So a point that requires immediate attention is the tightening of flag state and port state inspections and scrutiny of Lebanese or foreign flag substandard ships, particularly those classed with non ix classification societies when calling at Lebanese ports. So while this issue, is, uh, issue is, is purely technical, we see that ships are uh, playing Lebanese waters uh, very, free, uh, very freely as if uh, la vie est en rose. So that was it. Thank you very much for your time. I apologize for having taken a few more minutes. Uh, thank you. Uh, th that's perfectly okay, uh, Captain Sayer. I think uh, that uh, your, your presentation uh, is uh, uh, very rich with insights uh, and uh, um, uh, honest uh, assessments uh, and opinions, of course, which I'm sure that uh, that will uh, stimulate the discussion and the questions as we now uh, open, uh, in fact, uh, the floor for um, uh, comments uh, and, and answers to the questions that we've received. And uh, it's really uh, uh, now uh, my, uh, my intention to uh, just thank the speakers for these excellent presentations um, and uh, move, move uh, everyone uh, to the uh, Q&A. And uh, in the Q&A, we obviously take questions from uh, the audience, but we also encourage uh, the speakers to uh, put questions to each other uh, or to uh, come back on certain matters which uh, they have not had the chance, the chance to uh, perhaps uh, dwell upon uh, much in, in, in their presentations. And I'm going to try to uh, take uh, the questions that we that have already been received and I think we have uh, one first uh, question for uh, Captain uh, uh, Shaban of the ministry. Uh, I uh, Let me just check. Yeah, uh, Captain Shaban, the question goes as follows. So it's really a comment. Uh, uh, in, with respect to uh, your identification of the uh, uh, legislation, the, the broad legislation that is in place, uh, Mr. Eddie Danny uh, suggested that the regulation, I think, of 1966 regarding ports and harbors is not a law. That was his comment. It's not a law. I think he meant by that uh, to kind of... Uh, 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 challenge you on 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 what you uh, group in terms of uh, uh, laws uh, regarding the ma maritime law in Lebanon. I don't know if Captain Shaban, you would like yeah. to comment yeah. on that yeah. particular aspect. Yeah, and you you hear me now? You hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, you're right. You're right, my friend. You're right. Law and some in Lebanese, as you know, you are lawyer. Some called Marsum decree law. This little bit down. It doesn't matter. Even we agree about the decree law. I don't want to be a little bit enthusiastic because it is very important. It might be lead to judicial investigation about what I said, but I will say that, thank you. Law 19, not law, decree law 1966. If is it implemented? and apply as it is, the port explosion of Beirut can be saved, spared, and avoided. Look into the decree law of 1966. And what I said about the amendment 
of course, a lot of amendments like cyber maritime risk management system doesn't exist. ISM not exist. The ISM system very very important. How to apply myself as port port, uh, port state control for foreign ships? Ask them do this and do this in safety. In my country, we do not have national legislation about this. Let me speak about what you said, Mr. Uh, from Emza. What they did, very nice, but I have some blame. I have some blame to them. Many, many courses since 2008, it might be repeated again and again. I never asked, I've been there many times, I never asked the participants about saying for IMDG code, my friend asked, handling dangerous cargo. Do you have in your country laws regarding instruction implementation of, of IMDG? Right. For Lebanon, I, I never heard such question. For Lebanon, we met many, many courses since 2008 and not even implemented the national law. My friend, the only solution, I am disagree about Mr. Fabrizio Pirelli. He said some political and some not. Please excuse me. I appreciate very much Hamza. They help us gratefully. They pay for us money. You attend it and go pay this box money every day. We appreciate, but this is not enough. It might be Lebanon a special case. We know, he said many trainees went from Lebanon to this. Do you know, Mr. Pirelli, it might be not your, your, your problem, this our concern. Once I said last time, sharing of information, two participants, every time two participants went to Lisbon, went to Brussels, back again. We ask them for a report, we ask them for what you do, you ask them for uh, any kind of uh, information, nobody, nobody say. Any suggestion from this side, nobody say. Now, leave it this behind us, skip, skip. The best way, the commitment, Lebanon is a special case. Political leader, as the, the uh, ministers come, minister come out, come out. In Lebanon, the most important factor for implementation of the uh, of international convention is the directorate general, is the director general. We have in Lebanon hierarchy of, uh, of ordering a very extreme vertical not like in Cyprus, very extreme, horizontal, every department by itself can decide. What he said about my friend, Jamie Sire, about uh, ships, 50, 60 years, he's right, he's right. But what I mentioned before uh, about missing of national legislations is a change for a port of Beirut or for us to accept a bankering ship aged 45 years, registered. I've been the only person to, to, to refuse that uh, register. She doesn't have any any kind of safety. He knows it, Captain Zemir Sae. Uh, I believe her name, uh, Amadeo, or like this. 47 years as bankering, doing problem, no, no safety at all. What I am said is back to national legislation, this most important. Once we ratify a convention, we have the directly to do some national legislations. Excuse me, I am very humble to say that I did a lot of draft instructions for ballast water, for IMDG, and all being as draft. Nobody cares, nobody, nothing, and uh, it should be taken into consideration. For, for EMSA, repeated, Courses, it will lead for nothing. The most important for Europeans, the most uh, to, to, for our neighborhood, um, Western East Mediterranean partnership, and as well at the end to spare the money of taxpayers. Once you pay from European, from his heart to help other people, you should at once to see something happened, occurred at the end. Stop doing courses 
just just focus on internal Lebanese legislation by your help. You can ask, you can force it. Okay, we are ratified by last water till now. I am being surprised last year some circular issued. They give permission to ballast in, take in, take out water inside the port of Beirut and either uh, roadstead. What? What this? We are uh, the vast water management convention is issued by uh, official gazette in Lebanon, and somebody here issue a circular against the law, against everything. I am sorry to say that. I, I, <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Shaban. Uh... Uh, for for obviously uh, uh, dealing with the initial uh, question, but uh, uh, go, going in uh, some kind of uh, a, 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 a very uh, uh, passionate uh, uh, a response to uh, the the, uh, uh, the the ways and and policies really of uh, international and regional organizations in tackling the. Uh, what you what you consider as a uh, a special case in in Lebanon that I think uh, your your long your long experience uh, within the Lebanese Maritime Administration probably gives you um, a, a sufficient uh, standing and uh, uh, and a credibility for um, uh, uh, stating. Uh, uh, the, the, or, or, or representing reality as it is. So we are very thankful for your candid views on it. And I think that it, it, it will uh, provide uh, a lot of uh, food for thought. But let me um, go back to uh, the uh, questions. We have another question. Uh, Mister, was... Sorry, Mr. Sorry. Sorry if I interrupt oh, so. you, Aref. Yeah, I would yeah. like to add uh, just a few words. Uh, and uh, about uh, the intervention of Mr. Chaban. Go ahead. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Now, I would like to 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 stress uh, about the fact that uh, I mean, within Safe Med for Project, uh, the training activities is just the one part of the support which AMSA is providing uh, for Lebanon. As uh, I mentioned, uh, uh, we are providing also tools and services, but uh, on top of that, uh, we are providing uh, bilateral activities. So practically, uh, we provide support in those specific activities uh, in uh, on which Lebanon needs uh, more support. So every year, we organize a steering committee in order uh, to invite uh, and to receive uh, which are uh, the proposal uh, from the beneficiaries. And uh, in this, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in these uh, committees, Lebanon requested, for instance, uh, the preparatory audit in view of the IMSAs that we conducted. IMSA, um, Lebanon requested uh, studies on, port, on the adequacy on port reception facilities in three different ports and which uh, have been conducted. And Lebanon requested also this gap analysis, which, uh, uh, which was concluded uh, uh, last month. And, and uh, I think is uh, the, a very good starting point in order uh, to support Lebanon uh, in the transposition and implementation of the specific international convention that uh, they they will uh, they need and uh, in this regard uh, we already uh, we already planned uh, uh, with uh, the director general for land and maritime transport uh, uh, a meeting in order to discuss uh, which are their priorities uh, after the gap analysis. Now that we have the gap analysis, we are ready to support Lebanon in, in the priorities that they will, they need. So we are, we are ready for that. Of course, as I mentioned, it's not only 
a, um, a matter of support. It's only a matter of commitment, political commitment that uh, is needed. And it's also a matter of resources because every kind of support uh, doesn't lead to specific result if there are not enough resources. I'm talking about personnel, I'm talking about other kind of resources to implement the support. Thank you for that. Thank you, uh, Fabrizio. That actually uh, uh, sets things uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a rather uh, very rational perspective. And uh, we would like, of course, to uh, definitely, as part of this webinar, to uh, uh, um, let the ball uh, so somehow roll in terms of what is needed in Lebanon. And uh, the purpose of this webinar is uh, 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 precisely to raise these questions openly and have an open discussion about them from all sides. So I value, value very much your frank uh, exchanges on these matters. We have uh, another question uh, that uh, has come to us uh, and it is, it is addressed to uh, uh, Joseph uh, of the IMO. Uh, let me try to uh, 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 make sense of the question. Uh, and, and the question goes, uh, or the comment uh, goes as follows. Uh, being a member of many subcommittees, uh, including FAL, in recent FAL 12, 40 amendments, okay, uh, there's a duty basically of notification to IMO of stowaway cases, and that is a standard under the FAL convention. The question is, uh, does a similar approach regarding safety concerns, uh, could that be adopted in, in IMO guidelines or circulars? Uh, and that, that, that is the first question. And I think there's another concern that the uh, uh, questioner raised, which is about abandoned ships and, uh, and the risk they pose to safety. And over to you, Joseph. Okay, uh, there's a lot of questions, uh, but I'll, I'll take the, the first one. Um, first off, I'm not sure where uh, the person asking the question is from, whether he's from the government of Lebanon, because I could just, you know, he said that he- Yes, he is from, the, from, from one of the government agencies. Uh, okay, so what I'd like to be very frank, um, right up front right now about this uh, participation in subcommittees. Uh, I checked the subcommittee on carriage of cargoes um, and the ENT group that deals with the IMDG code and the MSPC code that are all related to this uh, explosion in Beirut, and there is no participation from Lebanon. So that, that's the first thing any government can do. It is so important to send representatives, especially now that they're online, to these meetings. And I'll tell you why. It's not that a government has to come in and make all these proposals. There are governments that do this. They have a lot of resources and research teams and come up with big proposals. But that's not all you get out of these meetings. These governments share their experiences and information. And it's tremendously useful. I know I had a delegation. Um, we'd go in with our own agenda. Now, Coast Guard, US Coast Guard had big budget. So we always had lots of proposals. But we learned so much from just listening to other states and the problems they were having. So like with the IMDG code, it has training requirements in there and how to deal with fires for all of these substances. Same thing with the MSBC code. Um, and, and they'll come in and they'll talk about, you know, how do they deal with their local fire departments so that they were trained to come in and know how to deal with these various chemicals and products if a fire occurred. Um, so that, that's really crucially involved. So I'm glad to see that uh, the government official was involved in sub subcommittees. I would encourage you to get involved with the Triple C subcommittee for cargoes. Uh, the Triple I subcommittee, that's why I highlighted that. Triple I subcommittee is all about flag and port state implementation, and it deals with everything, marine environment, safety, security. So these are very important bodies, especially in light of the Beirut explosion, uh, for those government officials to be involved with. Uh, regarding uh, the concerns with IMO guidelines, well, I mean, you know, solace is inherent with dealing with safety issues at sea, including abandonment of ship. And on, on, on a huge range, I mean, from life-saving equipment to radio communications to ports of refuge, we have guidelines on this and resolutions. Um, what I, I can just encourage that, one, uh, participating in the radio communications uh, subcommittee, COMPSAR, 
um, which now it's uh, some other big subcommittee that combines everything. I forgot the name, but uh, NCSR or something like that. It's like a massive subcommittee now with 400 agenda items. So we're kind of bogged down with getting to things, but I guarantee you radio communications and search and rescue are a priority for that new and large subcommittee. And they talk about things like ports of refuge. So if Lebanon or any other state has concerns in areas that they want improvements, that's where the proposal system comes in. You know, sometimes you can just submit an information paper and say, hey, by the way, we're doing a study on this and we thought you'd be interested in knowing. Uh, EMSA does that quite often, by the way. We get information papers from them and uh, documents of the research they're doing. It's very, very, very useful. I can't tell you how, how useful it is. And the EU in general does a lot of research projects. So it, it, it's just, that that's what I would recommend you do. As for, you know, what other FAL committees do versus the Maritime Safety Committee, I think it's very much like, uh, I think it was Captain Hassan said, if you look at that old law and everybody complied with it properly, you wouldn't have the port explosion. Well, I'd say if you just comply with our standards that are there now, you'll get a high safety standard. Uh, you don't have to fine tune everything to the exact point. Um, I, I mean, we always push for perfection and I appreciate that. But if we just apply everything we have, we would have a much safer maritime sector. So um, although it's very safe, there are areas that need improvement and, and you do that, first and foremost through implementation. So I hope that covers it in a broad sense, um, the question. So back to you all. Thank you very much, Joseph. Uh, um, I, I, I've had a further exchange with the uh, questioner and uh, he's, uh, <laughs> he's had to clarify that in fact, uh, he was referring to your experience uh, of having attended many committees. But I uh, should say that I think your comments about the uh, uh, suggested and ideal participation of uh, delegations uh, of the Republic of Lebanon to yes. the IMO committees and subcommittees are very well received and they are very uh, apposite in the context that uh, we have. Right, and I hope that becomes part of their maritime strategy going forward. Um, and I did in my answer highlight what I learned as a delegate and a head of delegation uh, and how that participation worked and worked very well. Um, of course, the U.S. Coast Guard breaks up all their departments, so I only went to the one subcommittee. Okay, <laughs> it was fire protection, but we have teams that went to the other subcommittee. So, absolutely. Thank you for that. We have a question for uh, Fabrizio uh, from, uh, I think, a Lebanese uh, Navy man, uh, and the question is as follows: Can the Lebanese Navy be part of the uh, I AIS data sharing? automatic identification system, data sharing, and what would be the procedure for that? I don't know, Fabrizio, if you would be in a position, probably you would be, to take that up. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the question. And uh, the first and most important thing is that the actions implemented by EMSA are implemented through a focal point that uh, has been designated by the Maritime Administration of Lebanon. So my um, first suggestion is uh, to deal uh, with the Lebanese focal point for the implementation of SafeMed project, uh, which is uh, Dr. Tamer. If uh, I remember well, is the acting director uh, in the Director General uh, for Land and Maritime uh, Transport. And uh, you can also, uh, I mean, uh, have a look on our uh, website uh, where you can find uh, all uh, the details and the contacts uh, of all the contact points uh, of the beneficiaries. And, uh, and secondly, I would like uh, to emphasize that uh, EMSA um, project uh, is supporting uh, the maritime administration of uh, Lebanese. So meaning that uh, we're supporting uh, uh, specifically the director the general for uh, land and maritime transport. But uh, doing that, if, uh, I mean, there is an interest of the Navy and there is a coordination between the Navy and the maritime transport, uh, I think that uh, EMSA could uh, do something in, uh, in this direction. But as, as I mentioned, uh, I mean, uh, the EMSA's counterpart is the maritime administration. 
back to you. Uh, I think, uh, yes, uh, that, that's uh, well noted. And uh, perhaps the question also points to uh, the need, again, to emphasize the necessary dialogue, cooperation between the agencies in Lebanon. Um, and and I, I would like to emphasize that in, in uh, um, uh, engineering this webinar and the panel of speakers, we have, of course, the Ministry of Public Works and Transport, the DG LMT, as the first speaker. And uh, uh, we, we have thought a lot about, you know, whom, of course, to, to invite. But uh, we thought that uh, uh, they are the, as, as uh, uh, Fabrizio said, th they are ultimately the primary uh, civilian maritime administration. And that actually is a very important, especially in international maritime language, because the IMO conventions point ultimately to the administration. Uh, and the administration is, is, is the flag administration. So um, usually the flag administration is the one operating through uh, uh, the, merit, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, agencies like the direct director general for maritime land and transport. But that does not mean that the other actors, the other agencies have no role uh, or uh, 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 are less important. Um, but there's so much that international organizations and regional agencies can do in that respect, other than to uh, encourage uh, cooperation dialogue, uh, because it's by, by sitting together nationally that you will be able to uh, um, uh, really exchange resources or share resources, share trans, uh, 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 transfer your know-how, because some of the know-how, as Captain Sayer said, is present in Lebanon. It is not being used, and that's a tragedy, really. So uh, it's uh, we cannot un, uh, uh, overemphasize the need for uh, a uh, candid dialogue and expression of needs between ministries, between organs of the state. Um, we have uh, a uh, another very good, I think, uh, juncture here where um, perhaps uh, Mr. Mackay, Victor, uh, I think you have something to uh, uh, share the panel uh, um, and the audience with. Thank you. Just shortly, actually, both you and uh, and, and Fabrizio and uh, especially Joseph, uh, the answer. So, uh, and then just to, to to refer back to what Hassan said, uh, uh, that uh, there are we we try to uh, from 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 the maritime perspective because it's a vast area in Lebanon. So it doesn't matter how what size the country is. Is the, the 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 area is so big and there's so many uh, uh, so it doesn't matter whether it is France, Germany, Australia. It's the the the, the rules and uh, it's it's really vast uh, compared to maybe other strategies. And then the last webinar we we um, witnessed that uh, the know-hows and then also the the the. The uh, expertise has already put, and there are so many strategies uh, have been prepared by uh, by experts. Uh, and uh, whether with international support or without international support, uh, it doesn't really matter. It is just uh, that they are laying in in, uh, in, in drovers, uh, waiting for uh, to be considered and uh, taken care of. Uh, and uh, that, that's very much, uh, it's, it's now that what I'm leading to is the importance and then to separate it. Okay, what's the responsibility of Lebanon to, to consider the ownership of the maritime domain? You have to believe that, you know, like you are the one who are developing your own uh, uh, prospect uh, towards your own maritime domain. And what you can actually always reach out to, to the International Maritime Organization and uh, EMSA or even uh, any other EU funded project uh, to, to support this uh, process. However, the importance of the civil society and also the private sector, it's, uh, it's extremely important to be considered. And uh, that, uh, that what is our responsibility, the international community in this regard, that, that uh, we just have to coordinate our efforts so that uh, we are not uh, uh, continue developing uh, uh, additional 
papers for the drawer, but we try to, 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 to show that we want to have one single maritime concept for Lebanon, uh, if it's necessary. Uh, but it's 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 a development process. So that's the reason why I fully agree with Fabrizio that you know, like it's a, you can't really separate a training just as a standalone uh, issue. It's always part of the big picture. And then when you, especially when you talk about strategies, and we are talking about strategies here, we are considering five to ten years uh, up in front uh, for us, where we want to see, for example, level on any country heading. So this is this is our approach. But what we need uh, in order to be uh, uh, to be able to back up the Lebanese authorities, we need a strong uh, ownership of the concept, uh, and that's what we are trying to develop. And I think uh, uh, with this one, of course, when for example listening uh, uh, Hassan as well, I was very happy that uh, that he he accepted that uh, the first uh, part of the, the the cure is actually that uh, to know the symptoms. So, and then uh, we just have to, we cannot neglect uh, that, that there is a, there is a, there is a, there is a, a strong uh, political uh, needs uh, to, to, to have take, to take into consideration. So I think that, uh, that, uh, that uh, from the, uh, I don't want to summarize international committee because I only represent one single project, but this is our aim uh, uh, together with others through these webinars, through the World Bank initiative, through other uh, national international actors, to trying to, 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 to blend in and to see that and also to develop this ownership from the, the Lebanese uh, uh, side, the private sector, the public sector, in order to come up with one single uh, uh, result, which then uh, generates a, a prosperous uh, uh, maritime domain. It's an extremely difficult job. I mean, like uh, nobody naive about that, uh, that it's, uh, in any countries is difficult. Uh, uh, maybe not in Hungary because we don't have a maritime border, so I think we could we would succeed uh, very quickly there. But uh, here in Lebanon, I think it's uh, uh, there is a there is a possibility. So let's let's uh, uh, that that's the aim. So over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to 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 everyone. Thank you. I don't know if uh, any of the speakers would like to uh, come back uh, to this issue of the multiplicity of uh, policy documents. Uh, and strategy, strategy uh, tools. Uh, I don't think it's uh, uncommon in any uh, national situation to have uh, many attempts, uh, many efforts that have been uh, 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 mooted, uh, but uh, that have not led to major success. Um, I, I guess that uh, your, the, the, the project that you're leading, uh, Victor, uh, uh, would usefully uh, bring some kind of a repository or uh, um, a uh, uh, take stock, taking stock of what has been done by the various ministries and agencies and partners. Because um, I'm sure that a lot of uh, good things uh, will have been uh, put in those uh, uh, statements. If I can Joseph. <clears throat> add one thing, Art. Go ahead. Um, so I'll take my hand down here. Okay, I hope you can see that when I put my hand up. Okay, I wasn't um, able to see it, but uh, oh, oh, really, okay, because I can see this big hand in the corner here. But it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, so I just want to pick up on something Victor brought up that I thought was very important. In fact, it was in my bio, um, <clears throat> and that is these government industry partnerships and how important they are to developing uh, policy. Uh, so you can see in my bio, I was chairman of the Solus Working Group on Fire Safety. Actually, wasn't run, even though I worked for the U.S. Coast Guard, it actually was not run by the U.S. Coast Guard. Uh, that group was run by the U.S. State Department to ensure that when we developed laws or went in and gave the U.S. position in IMO on laws, we took into account industry advice. And so that group was a government industry group. It had to meet like three times a year. I forgot it was 25 years ago for me. Uh, but we met several times a year. And I have to tell you that when we prepared for IMO, like at one time we were doing a lot of passenger ship work. I mean, the entire US-based passenger industry was in there and they knew exactly what they wanted uh, and what, what their views were. And of course, we have our responsibility as government. We can't give industry everything it wants. But at the same time, they came up with outstanding solutions that we hadn't even considered. Well, we didn't recognize it from a government standpoint. It would only be something you'd get from actual experience running a ship. Um, and then that was incorporated into our positions and we'd fine tune them. And then we'd find when we get there and we present the position, actually industry is now supporting us at the IMO 
because they agree with that and then they come in and say here's our experience so i'm sure lebanon already has these government industry groups but i would just say going forward uh, that's an excellent way to go forward is to establish these industry groups with the government so that they can work together at solving problems that actual hands-on experience is essential for good policy so i'll just leave it at that but Thank you, Joseph. That that is very illuminating. Um, I don't know if uh, uh, I could perhaps uh, um, address a question to, um, bearing in mind that I haven't received any other questions, uh, address a question to Captain Syed, who hasn't uh, had the chance so far to uh, uh, speak uh, in uh, within this uh, Q and A. Uh, Captain Sayer, about that issue of the, uh, I, I know you said that uh, you feel that there's a lot of uh, uh, skills in uh, the Lebanese uh, uh, maritime uh, community that are unused or uh, untapped. But what what is your experience of uh, those industry groups that Joseph has, has just referred to and that would seem crucial in, uh, in, in, uh, in any uh, healthy, uh, maritime industry in any country. Well, thank you for uh, for this important question. Uh, but uh, you know, I'll be quite reserved in answering it uh, because we, as uh, as an independent private sector company, we are Lloyd's agents in Lebanon. Uh, in addition to. Uh, to the insurance uh, works we do for uh, international insurers in Lebanon, we have, uh, or we are doing our uh, main shipping business here. So we try to stay a bit away from points that uh, may cause a dispute with anybody. Uh, definitely Lebanon needs, needs the assistance of all sorts of organizations. At the head of these organizations is the IMO and all uh, other organizations to assist our government, which proved that it it was it was a failure. Uh, I mean, um, it not uh, not a failure, but I mean our governments governments with S at the end who led our country to where we stand now. Uh, unfortunately, the sectarian, the sectarian differences in Lebanon, the corruption, which I don't mean only, I don't mean only greasing money, but I mean the nepotism, I need the favoritism, whether electoral, political, sectarian, etc. just name it, uh, all these shameful qualities uh, have contributed to where uh, the, the, Lebanese, uh, the Lebanese state is now, to the state of failure where uh, our politicians and our managers, let me say managers, because politicians are supposed to manage a country uh, where they led us. So allow me not to elaborate on, uh, on the role of any organization, but I stress that Lebanese government, and hopefully we shall have government one day, a way or another, or a mandate even, or whatever, uh, to pull the country out of the place where our, our managers have put our country in. So Lebanon, at present time needs assistance of all sorts of, uh, of organizations from maritime to nuclear, to environmental, to just name it. Thank you. Uh, uh, Captain Sayer, uh, thank you for, again, uh, your, your uh, honest views. Uh, I, I would, uh, just uh, obviously uh, uh, wish to uh, encu we, we, uh, the, encourage, encourage the maritime community to uh, uh, step up and, and take up its uh, role in, 
in uh, shaping the uh, future, the maritime future of Lebanon. Um, we have another uh, comment by uh, by one of the uh, uh, attendees, and let me read it out. And that is a comment addressed to you, uh, Captain Sire. Um, you mentioned the role of security agencies of the port besides customs. Um, and you have criticized their role saying that they should be specialized. I uh, don't know if you would like to uh, uh, take that up, Captain. Well, yes, uh, no secret in that. Uh, as we all know, the, the companies that's managing the port, which is the gestion, exploitation du port de Beirut, is the custodian of the uh, cargo, is the owner of the warehouses, and the warehouses uh, are uh, controlled in first place by the customs, which uh, to, to protect the, uh, or to preserve the interest of the state with regard to customs duties. In Italy, they, they have a body called uh, Guardia di Finanza, which is a very good uh, organization. They are supposed, in fact, to protect the money of the government. So in Lebanon, we don't have it exactly, but it is within the scope of work of the customs to preserve the income, let me say, of the, of the state. So uh, these two uh, bodies, if I may say, the private company, uh, the provisional company of Beirut Port Management and the customs are the main, the main uh, players or the main uh, responsible of running the port. However, however, the ISPS calls for uh, security, security including terrorism. Well, customs are not specialists in terrorism, nor general security. General security uh, is a body that regulates the entry and exit of the uh, port, the, the arrival of passengers, uh, if any passenger is coming through the port anymore. And uh, they, are, they are not specialists, but the army, the army, they have bodies that are specialists in anti-terrorism in a counter encountering the terrorism. So uh, such bodies are badly needed to assist the administration, which you've stressed and we know administration means administration, not a single body. Uh, for instance, after the, the blast, we worked together side by side with the engineering corp of the Lebanese army. And I, I was and all our surveyors were highly enchanted having worked with the engineering corp of Lebanese army. They, are, they were highly professional, highly cooperative, um, extremely decent. Uh, you know, normally uh, people have the impression that army are not uh, so kind like civilians, but no, they were extremely kind, extremely professional, if I may say. So uh, uh, in addition to the customs, whose role is, uh, goes in parallel with the management company, and in my opinion, these are the two uh, bodies uh, in charge or responsible or that are uh, liable for anything that goes wrong with the cargo in the, in the port. Uh, in addition to these two bodies, uh, there are other security bodies, like as I, what I said, general security uh, in and out of passengers and accesses. Uh, uh, internal security forces, uh, sometimes uh, they have restricted roles. Uh, state security, uh, they have also certain roles. Uh, army intelligence also they have and they must have certain roles because Lebanon is at the crossroad of, um, of uh, countries in conflicts and uh, all of you, you understand what I mean. Uh, we are in a very critical area here. 
um, lot of uh, co conflicting interests of uh, of neighboring countries. So all this all these bodies, security bodies, uh, should join their efforts in securing. This is the word securing the port, securing the 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 the, the wharves, the cargoes, the ships, etc. Uh, and in my opinion, and based on my experience, uh, 40 years abroad, I returned to Lebanon uh, not long ago, but uh, I spent a good part of my life abroad on board ships and uh, in oil, in the oil industry in the Emirates. I believe, I don't believe much in matrix management, but I believe that one body, one head, and uh, in line management. Well, matrix management is also uh, appreciated sometimes, uh, but we have to not to maintain sharp corners in matrix management and all bodies in charge of whether a 1% uh, role in the port of Beirut or 99% role, they have to join, to join forces and horses and come up with a workable, with, with workable codes, with workable procedures, let's call them, with workable uh, plans for, for the port that should be commensurate with international regulations that are already there. The ISPS code, the ISM code, the IMDG code, we are not going to reinvent the wheel. There are people who put the, 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 the essence of their knowledge in these codes. The IMO is there uh, to, to, to godfather uh, the whole world. So why we don't make use of, of, uh, of uh, these uh, very well established uh, codes? Uh, another another weak point we have, Arif, if you allow me. Uh, uh, I, can, I can only allow you a few seconds because we're really ha heading towards wrapping up. Sorry for okay. that. Okay, the, the, the state organigram, the organization chart of the state, I believe was drawn uh, during the French mandate in Lebanon, uh, maybe 50 years before I was born. And since then it is static and we know that uh, even uh, still water stinks and still organization chart in Lebanese uh, administration more than stinks. The Ministry of, uh, of Transport, uh, they don't have uh, the organization chart, they, 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 are, they are not allowed to employ mariners, imagine. They must be engineers and and uh, and lawyers probably, and uh, people having licenses in uh, history maybe, or uh, I don't know what nuclear science, but no mariners. So this is a highly deficient uh, point that uh, that 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 should be addressed, hopefully, in the review of uh, the new state. Thank you. Uh, th thank you. Just to close on that, and I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, I, I will not. Uh, we, we do not have uh, uh, more more time for uh, engagement on it. But just uh, the questioner uh, uh, th that uh, provided a comment on your statements, uh, Captain Sayer, uh, 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 further further stated that Lebanon does not mandate security to private entities when they are present on the ground. Uh, and I believe really that uh, there should be more, 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 more discussion uh, between the uh, various, uh, as you said, Captain Sire, uh, between the various organs of the state, as well as the industry on what exactly uh, should be the, the, the way forward for Lebanon. And as you pointed out, uh, uh, this is all in line with the IMO conventions and the best practices. So uh, we should not necessarily be reinventing the wheel uh, in any country, but uh, just to lay down uh, the path that suits best the uh, idiosyncrasies of uh, the uh, administration and the uh, situation in, in, in that country. Uh, 
I would like, however, to thank the uh, all the uh, all the all the uh, questionnaires uh, and the comment uh, commenters for the uh, participation during the Q and A. Uh, and we are uh, uh, now going to uh, come to the close of the webinar. But just uh, on that, if there are any lingering uh, comments or questions by speakers uh, that uh, we could I could take, yeah, Joseph. I just wanted to thank the government of Lebanon. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've been involved where a, a casualty occurs and you have to take a new look at yourself and it's never easy. Um, so I think uh, the government of Lebanon heading up events like this, taking a very good in-depth look at their procedures. This is not easy to listen to if you're in the government and you realize your program really wasn't up to snuff and it led to a casualty. This is very difficult. Uh, IMO had to do this with the Costa Concordia. We had major amendments that went through five years earlier, we're all patting each other on the back, and the Costa Concordia runs aground. And then we had to sit and listen to people say, you're not doing enough, and that's not easy to do. So a lot of uh, commending Lebanon for, for taking this new look uh, and digesting the information that we just heard, and then putting together a new strategic plan. I'm personally, I'm optimistic that it will lead to great results. So I just wanted to add that in there. So. Thank you, uh, Joseph. That's well, very much appreciated. We have Captain Shaban, who's uh, raised his hand. Captain? Yeah, uh, yeah thank you very much. Before uh, ending bit, uh, by saying... If you could speak up a bit, uh, Captain. Is that right? You, you, hear, you hear me now? Yes, go me? ahead. Is that right? Yeah. Before uh, uh, ending thanks to you, just to mention, the, the Navy and Lebanon can play a very, very strong role and uh, in aiding our administration. As I said before, we have a shortage, very acute shortage in personnel in our administrations. This, uh, the aid of Navy, just easily, it needs a, 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 a decision by minister to minister. And it happens in other countries. If you look in neighbor countries, in Syria, in Egypt, in Greece, in France, all these, they use the Navy and their task of uh, uh, not war task, just safety and security of ships. The Navy, they are, this is a one option, strong option. And uh, as well, you have not to say again, please. I am an administration, I know very well. Matter in Lebanon is not matter of political situation, no. The minister here comes and goes, just resign, come one, out in and out. If, but if you look in all administration and the government of Lebanon, the administration general director and the, the, the uh, aided by uh, chief of divisions, years and years and their post never changed. The most important is to do planification from administration, just the administrator here, say come, this my plan due for five years. First, to internal legislation for all ratified conventions. Second, uh, looking for personnel. Personnel are not too far in our hands. The neighbor are ready to help. And at the end, uh, on behalf of our administrations, my, we are very, very grateful to you really very grateful for the European Union. We are very grateful, hundreds and thousands of pounds for the Republic of France. Thank you very much, France, and for IMO, and for EMSA, we thank you very much. You help us a lot, a lot, a lot, but you are not uh, uh, the, the, the mother for each country how to, 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 to deal with. You give courses, you help us, but at the end, yeah, it's not your kind of job to ask, uh, did you do the, your homework tonight or not? No. We appreciate the role of EMSA very much, and I'm CD in Lebanon and our colleagues. Thank you, and we hope to see you again. And Mr. Arif, my special thanks to you for this, and uh, my uh, salute to all friends of WMU. Thank you very much. Thank you, Captain. Uh, and WMU also salutes you uh, back as one of uh, uh, its um, uh, outstanding alumni.
uh, as well as uh, the son, uh, Captain Sayer's son, I, 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 I was so informed. <laughs> uh, in any case, um, there's a, I think that uh, we have learned a lot. We have emphasized several points. I uh, don't think that time allows me to uh, recap them, uh, which will be a bit redundant. And uh, I'd like to all uh, 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 give you a break. Uh, and uh, really, uh, it's my, 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 uh, uh, my aim to thank you uh, very sincerely, you the speakers, uh, uh, Joseph, uh, Fabrizio, Hassan, uh, Jamil, um for you for really taking up this opportunity uh to uh, uh debate the very difficult situation that has arisen from uh, the blast and to help lebanon in its quest for uh a new uh path towards uh, maritime success we uh all, all of us wish uh, lebanon uh, uh a, a recovery good recovery but as uh, joseph said it is time to also to uh, to candidly look back at uh, at at the failures of the past and be bold enough to uh, draw a new course. Um, I would like to obviously, obviously thank the funding agency, the European Union, the audience for the excellent uh, participation, uh, the ICMPD uh, team uh, that is Victor, Tony, uh, Shaher, Dima, Rami and all others. And just to remind you also that uh, this webinar is part of a series uh, tackling different aspects of the redevelopment of Lebanon's, Lebanon's maritime outlook. Uh, further webinars will be announced in, uh, in, in due course. Uh, this webinar was recorded and we will be sharing the link to the recording and the presentations once they are ready. I would like to alert you to ICMPD Lebanon's active social media platforms on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, where announcement of activities are regularly posted. And these, uh, the links have just been shared in the uh, chat box. And uh, last but not least, uh, uh, Joseph, if you allow me to uh, ask you to convey our best uh, wishes as well to the Secretary General of the IMO and Ms. Degim. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, without further ado, uh, uh, let me uh, uh, close this session and uh, wish you all a very good day. Thank Bye. you. Bye -bye. Thank you.